I'm going to do a quick tutorial today, but something a little bit different. So there's a distinction between color correction and color grading. You know, what's the difference? Color correction is when you're trying to make the footage look as it would look in real life. You know, you're correcting the footage so grass looks like grass, you know, water looks like water, um, but true how you would see it in real life. Color grading is all about establishing a mood to the shot or giving a certain tone to the shot or a feeling. You know, that may be really warm and happy, uh, or it may be really cold and foreboding and, and dangerous looking. Oh, and one side note, please stick around till the end because sometimes establishing a mood and a feeling is more than just color. It's about the whole picture. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start on this first image. And um, first thing you wanna check, uh, what I always bring up are the scopes. And the one I concern myself primarily with right out of the gate is this one right here. This is the YC waveform. The YC waveform concerns itself with tonality, meaning the brights and the darks, highlights and shadows, and, and that's it. It doesn't concern itself with color at all, you know, other than contrast of the image. So we want to look at that. This image is exposed really well because you can see all the information is sort of this, toward the center. That means there's nothing really hot and there's nothing that's really uh, dark. So we'll start with that, and I don't, usually I don't even look at the image when I begin doing this, I just use the scope. So we'll go to, to elementary color, go to the curves, and we'll do what's called an S-curve, which you put two points in, drag your highlights up, now watch your YC waveform, get those highlights close to the top, but we don't want to crush them, so be careful. Then pull the darks, shadows down. Same thing, we want to get them close to the bottom, but don't crush them. Now that's pretty good. And go back and look at our image. It's before, after. It's looking a lot better. Now, and, and again, what we're doing right now is primarily color correction. We're not doing anything that is color grading just yet. Now we want to jump in and look at our RGB parade. That's the one on the bottom here. The RGB parade concerns itself with um, color balance. So we can see that we're a little high. See the high spot here, how these the, the waveforms kind of match with the red and green, but the, the blue one's a little hot on top. So we'll switch to the blue under the curves. We're going to grab the high end of the blue and pull that down. We're going to push up a little bit. See what that looks like. Yeah. Now this is looking pretty hot, so I'm gonna pull it down. There we go. Now we've got some good tonality. Now our saturation looks pretty good too. You'll notice right here the vector scope. This is about saturation. You can see, and I hope you can see this on screen, but you see yellow, red, magenta, blue, cyan, and green. Um, if you want to you want to kind of keep your saturation within these guidelines right here if you push them outside those guidelines you run the risk of, of pushing the codec too far and then uh, that'll cause artifacting and some nastiness so always check that to make sure your your saturation is kind of in, in the in the safe spot okay like I said that is more of a color correction which that works pretty good okay but what I want to do now I want to look at this and um, I want to see if I can bring up some of the color that's in these these browns and reds in this grass, these dead grasses. So still under the Lumetri, we're going to go down to Hue and Saturation. And uh, I'm going to drop anchor points. You can do this quickly by hitting, hitting the ones at the bottom, but I kind of like to place them like this, kind of in a clock formation. And what that does is if I adjust the red with an anchor here and here, that keeps these magentas and yellows where they are and won't affect them. If I didn't put an anchor in this circle on these other spots, if I grabbed one area and pulled, it would saturate everything. So this is a neat way to selectively um, pick your, uh, color, your color zones and saturate them accordingly. So let's take the reds and pull those up. See, already you can see, look at the image that's pulled up and then pulled down. That's even kind of a cool look, too. Again, this is more into the color grading versus color correction. These greens, see how muted they look? A little soft. We'll see if we can't punch those up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on screen, but the big difference here on my monitor. That. And then finally, the blues. Let's get some more blue in that water in the center. So, let's 
before, after, very good. Then to keep going for color grade, we'll go to the color wheels. This first wheel is for shadows. So we're gonna take the shadow, the hue of the shadows and push that down toward the blue. And then push the mids up the opposite direction towards the orange and yellows. Same for the highlights toward the orange and the yellows. So let's look at the image before, after. You can see it's a subtle change. So this is a color correction with a little bit of grade to it, so it looks a little bit more vibrant, pretty. There's that. Cool. You know, and keep in mind, I should mention that anything that you see me do here, I, I am pushing this much farther than I would do, you know, for broadcast. Um, I think it's easier to see uh, as far as a YouTube video goes because don't forget that even the highest resolution file that I use or that you use um, to do your color grading correction when you upload it to YouTube, YouTube encodes it also. And I think it, I think YouTube code encodes it around 10 to 12 megabits. So you tend to lose a lot of information. So that's why these kind of look a little over the top because I want you to, I think it's important to be able to at least see the difference in, in the befores and afters. So, but normally, like I said, I would not push these that far because this is kind of overkill. So let's look at examples of the same shot that's been color corrected, but with a color grade applied to it in a couple of different ways. Okay, we need to stop right there because to be honest with you, this doesn't look good. And there's a reason. One of the most overlooked things in video, while color correction and color grading is very important to get that exact right beautiful tone and feel that you're looking for, don't forget about sound. Sound can make or break your video. Let's look at a couple of examples with the color grade applied, but different sound with each of these color grades so you can see what I mean, how it completely changes and enhances that mood. So here's the thing, you have lots of options, and which is almost the kiss of death because you have lots of options, you know, so what do you choose? But it's pretty cool that you can make a certain scene have a, have a feeling and a look that's totally different than the way it was shot, but perhaps fits the piece that you're working on or fits the scene that you're working on. And I think it's important too to realize that while there are rules of thumb and, and definite guidelines to follow, these are your creations and you can make them look like whatever you want them to look like. That's what makes it fun. So, you know, experiment, go crazy, you know, push something way beyond its boundaries. Uh, that, that's the only way to know how much to pull back sometimes. Even if you think it's a crazy idea, sometimes the craziest ideas turn out to be the perfect idea, but you don't know unless you try. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you're new, please subscribe and give me a like if you don't mind. And um, I will talk to you guys really soon. Thanks and have a great day.